Good morning, guys, and welcome to the Monday Movie Memo. And we are talking all things The Amazing Spider-Man today. Um, and I know we've had a lot of Amazing Spider-Man 2 coverage on the site. It's the first big blockbuster of the 2014 summer blockbuster season, which is going to include such movies as Godzilla and X-Men Days of Future Past and Transformers Age of Extinction. And I know that the summer feels like it started with Captain America the Winter Soldier. But Amazing Spider-Man 2 definitely had the opening slot, that May 2nd, you know, opening weekend position that Marvel has held on to for so long. And Spidey was able to, to turn that into $92 million for its estimated opening weekend domestically. I believe it's over the $375 million mark internationally. I had to check this morning. But, um, I mean, safe to say I think Spider-Man's off to a pretty good start. Uh, not great by the franchise's standards, but uh, good for a standalone summer film. Today we're going to be putting the finishing touches on a lot of our Spider-Man coverage, and we will continue to track the progress of films like The Amazing Spider-Man 3, or possibly The Sinister Six, if that's going to leapfrog its standalone Spider-Man movie. Uh, we're going to check and see if maybe Mary Jane Watson is going to be a big part of the franchise going forward, as I'm starting to hear. Uh, and what villains might play out in The Sinister Six. There were a few that were hinted at in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. But I want to start this conversation today um, by talking about Emma Stone's character, Gwen Stacy. And now is the point where you need to stop watching this, uh, because I'm going to get into spoilers, and even though we're discussing one of the most famous storylines in Spider-Man's history, and the reason that fans um, are, are tuning into, I think, primarily, uh, the portrayal that Emma Stone is doing, to, uh, now's the time to stop, because we're going to talk freely and openly and candidly about The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and then later we're going to have an interview on the site with Emma Stone, where she talks freely and candidly and openly about the character of Gwen Stacy and um, her fate in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and her future in the franchise, too. So um, if you haven't seen Spider-Man 2 yet, turn it off right now. I'm going to continue talking openly with spoilers in 3, 2, 1. So Gwen dies in the most famous Spider-Man storyline ever. Ever. When you introduce Gwen Stacy, the only reason that you're introducing her is to kill her off. Um, it is a tragic turn of events in Spider-Man's life. It's something that defines him as a character, um, equally in the way that I think Bruce Wayne's parents dying defined him as a character. Uh, every decision that Spider-Man makes following the death of first Uncle Ben, and then secondly the death of Gwen Stacy, uh, compel him to be the hero that he is. And it's part of the reason why I, I always had a big problem with the Sam Raimi films, because I thought that Raimi, for the things that he got right, uh, completely mishandled the, I think, the legacy and the importance um, that is the Gwen Stacy storyline. If you remember in the first Sam Raimi film, he went with Mary Jane Watson instead of Gwen, which is fine. I mean, that's an okay place to start, and if you want to change the mythology a little bit, do it that way. Um, but then he went through the procedure of putting Mary Jane on top of a bridge and having her get knocked off by the Green Goblin. It was, it, it was interesting. It took so many of the Gwen mythos, um, but applied them to Mary Jane, and then stopped half-heartedly um, without being able to commit to legitimately killing off Peter's love interest, and to Spider-Man fans, or, or to me, as a, as a dedicated Spider-Man fan, maybe it didn't bother you, and a lot, so many other people defend the Raimi trilogy, um, that was like spitting in the face of the character, uh, and it just completely showed this lack of awareness of, of who Spider-Man is, and, and who Peter Parker is, and how important that, that death was, how important that turning point was. And then, because one of the problems it sets up is by the time you got to Spider-Man 2 in the Raimi trilogy, you didn't, you, 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 they tried to force him to a point where he felt like he had to give up being Spider-Man, but, I mean, he gives up being Spider-Man because he lost the love of his life. And when Sam Raimi didn't allow that to happen, um, Mary Jane became this useless figure, uh, this caricature of a love interest, and they never really knew what to do with her after that. I don't think they really knew what to do with her in the first place, but the mishandling of Peter's love interests, I think, damaged Sam Raimi's trilogy uh, to a point where it was never able to really bounce back. So they had a great villain in Spider-Man 2. Doc Ock is a fantastic villain. 
but you had these useless characters like Mary Jane Watson and, and Harry Osborne, who they didn't really know how to handle either, um, just clogging up the works. So when Mark Webb rebooted the franchise, while I understand that a lot of people complain that we didn't need a new Spider-Man series, I thought by introducing Gwen, uh, played by Emma Stone, we finally had a chance to atone for the mistakes of the Raimi trilogy, and they finally had a chance to do Gwen Stacy right. And that's what I've been waiting for. As, as a dedicated Spider-Man fan, that's what I've been waiting for. The, the Gwen Stacy saga to play out on screen um, the, the way that we want it to, the way that we expect it to. And that, for me, is why The Amazing Spider-Man 2 currently ranks as the best Spider-Man film that we've seen yet. Um, yeah, it has issues. I mean, Electro isn't the most fully formed villain, and, and it suffers from trying to set up you know, some sequels, but, but they nailed Peter and Gwen, and they nailed the, the chemistry between the two leads, and they nailed the death of Gwen Stacy. Um, they change it. It doesn't take place on a bridge. It takes place in a clock tower. Uh, you can find on the website, uh, the interview that we did with Mark Webb, where he talks about the motif of time and him wanting to implement this as a theme of Spider-Man not being able to stop the hands of time. Uh, no matter how much power he has, uh, time is finite, and all of that power is not going to be able to... Uh, all of the Spider-Man powers you have is not going to be able to stop time in the most um, difficult of situations. And so the Clock Tower you know, symbolism was heavy, but I thought emotional. Uh, it really, really hit me. And, and the way that I know that, that, that they really hit the, the beats of the Gwen Stacy saga is that as a fan, I knew that it was coming. I knew that it was coming from the, from the minute we saw Gwen on, sta on the screen in the first movie. Uh, you, you introduce Gwen Stacy into your narrative for her to die. Um, and when it happened, it still hurt. It hurt bad. Like, I was still, like, choked up and and uh, really devastated by the loss. There was this moment when, you know, uh, first when, when, when Goblin first drops her and Spider-Man catches her and, and he spins and they smash through the stained glass and they land on the catwalk and Peter says to Gwen, are you okay? And Emma Stone shakes her head violently and she says no. Like, like she she really understands the seriousness of what, what's happening. Like, all of a sudden, she, she's made this decision to stay. She's made this decision to help Peter. She has emphatically told him, this is my decision. Um, you can't keep me out of this. I'm here to help. But in that moment, she all of a sudden realized, you know, that these are super-powered beings fighting each other, and she's in the middle of this, and she's in grave danger. And that little head shake and that little you know, whimper of no really just set the mood of, oh gosh, she realizes that this is not going to go well and all that bravado uh, earlier isn't helping her anymore. And then they included this this tease uh, that they used for the trailers of Gwen falling and Peter um, snagging her uh, in, with his web and her hanging there. But, you know, that's the middle of the sequence. And the sequence continues and, and Gwen uh, is hanging from the web and she shouts to Peter and the web snaps. And you're watching her fall and Mark Webb uses the slow-mo technique and he shoots a web and the web sort of becomes a hand. And for, for a second, as it's happening, I really just thought, he's gonna catch her, you know, it's going to, they're going to save her, which is, it's so funny, because it's like, that's, that's, that's a fool's errand, and as a Spider-Man fan, I guess we're constantly always wishing that Peter could save Gwen, and even in that moment, again, I'm, it felt like I was reading uh, Amazing Spider-Man 121 again, where I just was like, panel to panel to panel, he, he has to save her, that's what Spider-Man does, um, but of course we know the legacy is that Spider-Man is not able to, and he loses the love of his life. And so for Mark Webb to commit, Mark Webb and his team, to commit to that storyline and to get the saga right and to give it to fans um, now, we own it. It's on screen. It'll be on DVD. It'll be in our library. We will have the Gwen Stacy storyline played out. For that reason alone... Um, Amazing Spider-Man 2 ranks as, as my favorite 
and the greatest, in my opinion, Spider-Man movie that we've seen to date. On top of the fact that the action's unbelievable, I continue to love what Andrew Garfield's doing as Peter Parker. The scene at the end with the kid putting the mask on, pretending to be Spider-Man, to rise up to the challenge of, of you know, even the most ordinary people can become Spider-Man. Um, but it's the Gwen Stacy saga. It's finally letting the Gwen Stacy saga play out the way that fans need it to play out. That is the reason why I will consider this, for now, the greatest Spider-Man movie that we've seen to date. So, feel free to disagree with me. Uh, weigh in in the comments section below. I know a lot of people had bigger problems with it. Uh, and, and tell me, I want to know, even if you didn't like the film, I still want to know what you thought of how the Gwen Stacy saga was handled. Because to me, it's, it's, it's an, a crucial benchmark in the development of the character, and it's something that Tobey Maguire was never able to play with, and Andrew Garfield was, and I thought he did a tremendous job with it. Um, I want to hear in the comments section, even if you disliked the film, I want to hear what you thought of the Gwen Stacy sequence. So, uh, weigh in below. I'm going to work on the Emma Stone interview. We're going to have it up on the site very shortly. She talks about um, what she thinks about the impact of Gwen Stacy on the entire franchise and how she would like to... Uh, maybe continue contributing, which I thought was a really interesting conversation to have with her. Uh, keep it here on Cinema Blend. Uh, we will continue to cover all things Spider-Man and all things summer blockbusters. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Monday Movie Memo.